What it is, I'm into cycling, any kind of cycling. If you're into cycling, you just want everybody else to cycle. That's what we always did our things before. We did lights because we wanted lights. We did brakes because we wanted brakes. We did hubs because we wanted those. It was just for our own purpose, our own use, really. But you never think you're going to go into this. And to me, it's just another form of cycling. It's all part of the same thing, mountain biking, cross, cross country, enduro, downhill. It's we're just cyclists, aren't we? That's what it's about. You know, pe people always think that um, it, it, it comes in an instant, and these things don't. It took quite a time. Ian Weatherall was down in Cambridge, and I thought I'd sort of Shanghai him for a cup of coffee. We met in uh, hot numbers over a cup of coffee in this Plan B. That was the idea of it, make one bike. I'd, I'd given him the story, look, I think we've got something really special, something really unique. He sketched it up on this pad, and he had this idea for this bike as it is, totally different. And uh, I think uh, Ian's told colleagues that that was the most expensive cup of coffee he's ever had. So we've ended up putting a million quid into a project to produce this bike. Ian just looked at it and thought, hmm, we'd like to be involved with the Olympics. It'd be a great, great thing for our company. A bit of flag waving because it's Team GB. And uh, suddenly we were kind of on a roller coaster. I'm Sam and I'm a design engineer here at Hope. I joined in August 2018 so I've been heavily involved since then on this uh, British cycling project. Because we'd not made a, a frame like this before where the chain stays are actually moulded as part of the frame as well, we effectively created our own mould. The first thing to talk about with the track frame is probably yeah. mould materials. So it comes in as raw material and then Guy picks this up and takes the mould design and actually machines that so we can use it to make our parts. So then that, that gets machined and eventually looks like one of these. So on there at the minute, we've actually got one of the large variant frames and we're machining one of the inserts. For aerodynamics, it was required that there needed to be a, effectively a 90 degree sharp corner because of the complex curvatures. To actually machine that sharp corner is pretty much impossible. So what we have to do is actually split the tooling and we can machine this separately on five axes so it's just behind you. And this then gets, I can show you, it gets dropped in. That gets bolted and fixed in on the location pins. And then this top surface gets machined to perfectly align it with that. And then you can see in here, we've actually got a perfectly sharp corner. This is where the pieces of carbon get cut, that actually get laid into the mould. We get it delivered in a roll that's hung at the end. And then this table, actually drags the material along and it's got a vacuum pump in that holds it down. The mould maker is right next to the person who's laying it up, who's next to the person who's designed it. We're very confined and everything's done in-house, whereas what other people would do, they tend to spend it out of China or Algeria, they, they're North Af Africa, they produce it. So it's, we're actually producing it ourselves in Barn Oswick, the whole thing's done here. We pride ourselves in producing everything in-house. And walking around Hope, I just came away thinking, wow, that is best of British sport, but actually one of the best examples for how a company should be, because they had the discipline, they had the know-how, but I got the impression that people actually like working for them. Uh, and to me, that's, that's a perfect story.
So this is actually where the frames are manufactured and laid up. This is the mould size we're working on at the minute. It's the one of the small variants. Chris is normally in here. My name's uh, Chris Clark. I'm a composite engineer at Oak Technology. I've done various projects from Defence, Formula One, you name it. You can make it in carbon fibre or glass or Kevlar. Years ago, you'd, you'd get a piece and you'd cut it. You know, you get a square, say there, and start trimming it, put it in, trim it. Now we've got software, what you can develop the shapes and open them out into 2D to obviously go onto the cutter in there. Then obviously once you've got all your pieces and then they have to be laid in, obviously in the right place with the instruction. It's like 20 odd hours to lay one of these up. There's 320 pieces or something like that in it. I actually stood and counted them, but I think Neil has. <laughs> and uh, for, <laughs> for, it is the oracle. 320 pieces, so over three day, two or three days. It's a long process, which just, you know, that's about what surprises people. It's, it takes so long, so labour intensive. So when you get one out of the mould, comes out, good that, yeah, done that. It's all been worthwhile. And then see it on a track, hopefully winning a gold medal. That's uh, it's even better. Yeah, that's the, the thing that really pleases me. So this is where the frames are actually, we say cooked, but there's probably a more technical term you should be using. But effectively, it's heated patterns that compress the mould together. And it's in there where the temperature, we actually use a cycle where the temperature increases at a certain rate, along with the pressure, to obtain basically the ideal surface finish. But the track frame's in there for about four hours, give or take, to actually cure it off. If you think about the manufacture of the frame itself, it's an extremely artisan product. We've got people in there who are um, experts in the kind of field working on this product and it could be at any one time upward of six or seven people actually actively involved in that manufacture. It's, it's not a quick product to produce. If you looked at um, a mountain bike frame that we're running production, potentially one person would produce a frame in broadly speaking about one and a half days. A track frame, one person uh, and this is an extremely skilled person, might produce one frame in about two and a half to three days. So the actual amount you can produce is extremely limited. And that's why I would use the term artisan. Uh, every, everyone is like an individual build. As we went along the, the way, I think there was a realization that this was a pretty big project. Um, and somehow I, persuaded uh, Ian and Hope to, to do the wheels as well <laughs> as a sort of a, well you know you're doing the job so you might as well throw these in knowing full well that wheels are a monster piece by themselves. This is a front disc wheel for the track bike for Team GB. The actual the design of the wheel uh, has been going for quite a long time. It's over 10 years old, the actual design. 
but it's more the technology which has improved over the years. We'd effectively dismantled anything that we'd had given to us in the past about how to make a wheel and effectively cleansed it and came up with a, what in my mind is an extremely innovative way to produce a wheel as a monocoque structure. And we don't believe anybody else produces a wheel in this manner. Yes, the unique point about this wheel is it's actually a monocoque construction. So it actually comes straight out of the mould tool in one piece. Uh, so that's both, both sides of the wheel. The, the actual hub itself and the rim section is all done in one. A monocoque structure in, in, the, in the terms that we are talking about now is something that's made in one piece. I, it's not made in several pieces and then either bonded or mechanically fastened together. You're using the carbon fibre in, in the entire structure, all bonded and cured off at the same point in time. So you, you've no bonding resins in there or anything like that, you, you're actually curing off in one piece. The benefit of doing that all in one is we can um, control the tolerance a lot better. The big one is the weight. The, the weight of that wheel that comes directly out of the mould tool is less than 700 grams. As somebody who's a mountain biker, but I was more of a roadie in my younger days, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to be involved in uh, the Olympic project. I think Ian's theory is that um, we'll get the experts in and then we'll just train people that are passionate about the product. Yeah, so I've, I've learned everything I know actually here at Hope Technology over the last three years. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to make the, the perfect frame, if you will, you know, e each time and uh, the fact they actually ride a bike now that I've laid up myself, it, it means so much more when you're out on the trails. Definitely. Yeah, with a, with a track bike, it wants to be stiff because obviously they're wanting to get every single watt, you know, out through the cranks. So we're using a little bit of uh, Kevlar in these uh, rear seat stairs. I'd love to have ridden it when I was riding track, definitely. And uh, yeah, it looks amazing. It's uh, and if if it's as um, fast as what they're saying and uh, does as well as what they're hoping, then yeah, it's going to be amazing. Once the frames have uh, been moulded and the bags have been taken out, they come into this area here for finishing. Once they've been trimmed, they actually get flattened back before a very light coat of lacquer is applied to it. So the important thing for us is to make sure that any surface defects are identified and removed quite early on in the process, however small they may be. They'd go into the room just along there where they get a lacquer coat. We're very conscious that the amount of lacquer adds weight. Each layer of lacquer could be as much as 20 grams in weight. So we're gonna, where we can, apply as few coats as possible. See, the only ones we have done are the ones that have been test ridden by the track riders. I have some
first bike just to qualify in the track events she set her personal best on that bike this is like a, a big project if you've never done it before and I knew I was going to get some criticism uh, why are you going for people who've never made a track bike before and I, I thought we've got this fantastic uh, mountain bike manufacturer who in their own niche are the best in the world and they know what they're doing so it, it was an easy, easy decision for me. This is the way I want to go.